Hello and welcome to a new video on neural networks getting stronger. I'm your host, Trader Zeta, and hopefully you're doing very, very well. Today I would like to go over the neural network implementation that I have. I have updated it since. And the neural network scalper uh, that I did in the last video. There were definitely some things that can be approved upon, so in that video that's what we're going to do. All I need to go is here and this right here is the uh, neural network scalper, but we're not going to start with that. We are going to start with uh, an interesting discussion about error. Okay, in the last, uh, I would say, year or so, I've worked extensively on this neural network, and every single time I go back to it, I find a little detail, a little something that I can improve or that can get better. So in this case, if we go to the constructor, I've added max iterations, beta 1, beta 2, and the verbose variable. Okay, what do these things do? Uh, I've all, I'm, we're also adding uh, load weights and write weights. These are not finished yet at all. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to go down to this um, function called uh, train. So here we just uh, set these member variables, to, or the member variables from the constructor. And then we're going to go down to train. Now train is a very hard function uh, to kind of really uh, sink one's teeth into. But the first thing that I've done is I had to find double uh, j equals zero outside of the scope of the loop. And j is updated every single iteration. So finally, we can print out uh, j and iterations if verbose equals true. Now, for some reason, I'm not exactly sure why, I reviewed this code and I had um, only one beta, which is 0.9. And in the algorithm, there are two betas, beta 1 and beta 2 and these need to be independently set. I'm not actually sure why I had this issue, why I forgot this detail, but oh well. So uh, here we have the uh, m underscore beta one and m underscore beta two, and we use those. Uh, once I plug these in, my training got infinitely better, and I was able to use uh, higher level uh, neurons. Okay, and I also updated the uh, um, cost function. I think it's the same exact thing. I think this is just a technical thing. But here I sent temp to equal temp times temp, which is temp squared. So it's squared first. I'm not exactly sure if that was computing correctly in the cost function. But there are other cost functions uh, that we can implement, like uh, uh, log loss or something like that. There's, ex there's an exponential one. This is just the current one that I'm using. OK. And then here are all the other values. So. Uh, deep down, this neural network definitely needed a bit of work for it to do what we needed to do. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go over to uh, the scalper and we're going to implement that new neural network with uh, the atom optimizer and the verbose and the max iter- oh, I forgot the max iterations. Let me do that. Uh, that's something also worth valuable. Okay, so another thing is is that you can set the max number of iterations it takes. So m underscore max iters is less than iterations. Okay, that's also very important because uh, I learned that I was this is only set originally to five thousand, and sometimes you actually might need more than five thousand. So this was definitely uh, changed up a bit. Okay, so now we can go over to here to this, and here is the neural network. Um, the only other thing that we've really added is uh, deal info so we can get the historical deal. We have uh, the instantiation of these classes and we have a few new uh, variables. So this is scale factor. This is to do with a martingale, uh, number of losses to do with a martingale. Minute tracker, uh, for whatever reason, it was training on every single second and I didn't like that at all. And it was unnecessary computation time. So what we've done is uh, we're gonna keep track of the minute so it only trains every minute. Uh, this is the double lot martingale, so this is for the martingale calculation. This is the number of neurons, this is beta 1, beta 2, fitting, learning rate, max iterations. I set this to 50,000. Uh, the cell threshold, 0.1, by threshold, um, and then verbose is equal to true. And then we throw these all into the constructor. Okay. Another thing that I've updated is I'm using nine time frames, so M1, M5, all the way up to week 1. And you can uh, basically uh, create a uh, create an array of this like this, 
Uh, the RSI normal norm I and stochastic norm I don't really use. The EMA normal I do, so I have used this. I switched these two values, I think. I think that's what I did, okay? And then what we're going to do is we're gonna go down here. I was working with standard deviation, um, but that turned out to not really be of any value. That was actually hurting my results and not helping them. So here we have RSI. Um, the value is between uh, zero and 100. So we have to divide by 100. And as you can see, um, these times matter, right? So if we're doing a historical calculation, we can't just take the most recent values. We have to take those recent values that are relevant to that time frame. In other words, 10 minutes ago. So on the minute one, we do 10 minutes ago. On the minute five minute, we have to do uh, two uh, whatever back. And then on 10 minute, we only do, we do the uh, one back, right? And all, for all the other ones, time greater than two, uh, we have most recent, okay? And we're going to do that for all of these. The stochastic oscillator is also divided by 100. So we're just gonna do the same time, time calculation. Um, EMA, very similar thing. Again, this looks complicated, but it's just the same thing uh, doubled up. And we're gonna do that for all those time frames there. And then what we're going to have is this in-train matrix three by nine, and we have, uh, we set the rows. So these have to be vectors to, in order to go in. So that's cool. And then we're going to get the most recent values for every single one for the RSI in PRED. Okay, same thing for the stochastic oscillator, same thing for the EMA, and same thing for the standard deviation, even though we're not using it. I just have it here just in case I uh, wanted to try it out. Um, in pred is going to be three by nine, and as you can see, we add up all these rows. Very, very nice. We put all the rows in, um, and we have three uh, rows, so it's going to be a three by one matrix for the correct value. We set the correct value to 0.5, uh, completely unbiased. And then if uh, the cur price minus the pref price is greater than zero, uh, we give the correct value zero. If the cur price minus the prev price is less than zero, then the curve value is one. And we are going 10 candles back. So this is the current price is the ask and the bid divided by two. Uh, the prev price is uh, I closed 10 minutes ago. So the close 10 minutes ago. We fill that correct, uh, we fill that uh, correct matrix with the correct value. And now we have to do the time calculation. So this is how we uh, put things into a struct. Trade tracker basically means that um, basically uh, we have no tr we have no trade open. Uh, M position uh, select. So if, if this position is open, if this position is open, then what we're going to do is check the time. It's been open for longer than 10 minutes, so 60 seconds times 10, 10 minutes. Then what we're going to do is first uh, see if it's in profit or a loss, and then we're going to close that. Uh, position. If it's in profit, then number of losses goes to zero because it wasn't a loss. If number of loss, if it is, if it's in the negative, the number of losses is incremented by one. So this is for the Martingale. And same thing for the cell. We just do that. And now we're going to calculate the uh, Martingale uh, lot size. So we take the scale factor. So say for example, if it was two, double down every time. This would be a two. If you one point two every time, uh, then this would be a 1.2, and you raise this to the power of the number of losses, and then we normalize the double, so we can't have, uh, you know, obviously more than uh, two decimal places, because it's going into the lot. Next up, what we're going to do is we're going to look at Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, and we're going to be between the hours of uh, 17 and 22. All right, and then what we're also going to do is this min tracker. So if the min tracker is not equal to the uh, min, then uh, we're good. But if it is, then what we're going to do is gonna, we're going to update min tracker with stm.min. Here's the scalper. We have to put the training matrix in. I think I screwed up that last time. So for whatever reason, I put in the pred. Uh, and it still kind of worked, which is freaking amazing. Um, but this is a much better approach by putting the train in. This is the proper matrix. Uh, this is the correct matrix, and then here is the uh, pred matrix, the pre, uh, the prediction. So you put the in pred, and then we're going to do double pred one minus the pred mean. 
this flips the probability for whatever reason I needed to do this because uh, some of the values up there had to be zero and one in a certain order. And then we're gonna print out the prediction. We're gonna print out the lot size and the martingale. And then here are just the conditions for the trade. Now, again, I'm not a financial advisor. I'm not claiming any financial advice. I make no guarantee of code. Uh, these are just uh, my ideas and some fun math that I do. So here's pred uh, greater than buy. This is a threshold trade tracker. And it's only going to do uh, this if it's a multiple of 10. The minute is a multiple of 10. So there is the um, there is the MQL5 uh, order, whatever. So here's for the sell uh, trade tracker. Uh, Pred has to be less than the sell threshold. So let's look at the final results. Hopefully they're somewhat decent. They were good when, when, I, when I looked at them. And holy smokes, look at that. Let me move this. So that's uh, that's really, really good. So let's look at the inputs and talk about the inputs. The lot size is one, the take profit is 2,000, the stop loss is 2,000, just to get out of the way. Magic numbers, uh, scale factor is one in this case. Uh, with this kind of high of uh, a result, I mean, I definitely uh, might consider putting this a little bit higher. This is for the Martingale. Uh, beta 1 is 0.9, beta 2 is 0.999. I read this in a paper, <laughs> so I'm. this is just something that I, uh, I, I learned. You, I mean, I, feel free to try different values, see what happens. Um, learning rate is, uh, um, sorry, the fitting, I, I, I have the glasses on, the fitting is 0 0.01, so the cost function has to be less than 0 0.01, and then the max iterations is 0 0.001. No, 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 sorry, the learning rate, jeez. I'm just getting all sorts of screwed up. So the learning rate here is 0 0.001. Okay, the max number of iterations is 50,000, and the uh, sell threshold is 0.1, the buy threshold is 0 0.9, and we say verbose equals true, and then these are all the hyperparameters for uh, the technical indicators that we're using. Okay, so we're very, very close to being done. We have maybe two, three minutes. Um, again, this, you know, this is very, very nice. I mean, it's still, like, not 100% perfect, <laughs> but, I mean, this is doing much, much better than a lot of the results that I had earlier and uh, I think a lot more of the details have been ironed out. Uh, I should say something about error. Uh, errors are inevitable in life. Uh, failure is inevitable in life. Um, sometimes things work even when they shouldn't and it's really easy to convince yourself as I did earlier um, today. <laughs> so hopefully uh, this is correct. Hopefully this is uh, you know a better result and really deep down uh, I really appreciate everybody's continued support on these things these things are not simple uh, people do make errors and uh, it is an ongoing process in the computer science world at least for me personally I don't think a project is ever finished or completed I think there are just certain stages of its evolution um, the idea that at any given point something is 100 percent done or there's nothing else that can be added is, is to me personally ludicrous uh, so, you know, deep down, take that for what you will. We have about maybe a minute left, so I'm just rambling here. We uh, can go to the journal, which I think is pretty useful. Uh, another thing that I wanted to say is that uh, you can really see if this is actually training or not um, by looking at the iterations. So if the iterations are all of a sudden 50,000, then one, 50,000, then one, it you know, you're probably not in a good balance. You're probably not doing anything. Uh, if all of a sudden it's like, you know, one, then 27, then 700, then 1,000, and then back to 27, then 28, whatever. It's within a, within a range. As you can see, it's bouncing around between 57 and one right now, which is pretty good. That means uh, there's probably some good stuff going on in the neural network. Um, as you can see, you can see the prediction right here is 0.81. You can see the cost value, which is actually exceptionally low and doing very very well um, you can see the lot size uh, has remained stable I mean there was a 400 there a couple seconds ago so this is absolutely beautiful this is an amazing amazing result in my opinion much better than the previous 
Uh, I kind of maybe jumped the gun a little bit too much, and I apologize for uh, making a video on something that, uh, you know, probably wasn't as perfect as it should be. But we can go to the back test, and we can see that the absolute balance drawdown was 79. Uh, the short trades won was about 48%. Uh, the profitable trades, profit trades percent total, 51%. Um, these are the short trades. Long trades, we are about 53.77%, which is exactly kind of what we expect. Um, it's really, really hard to beat 50%. <laughs> uh, we can look at the expected payoff is 1. The sharp ratio in this case is 8.73, which is kind of exceptional. The profit factor is 1.4. The recovery factor is 1.7. Uh, it took about 783 trades. Uh, profit trade is 108. Um, let's see. Uh, consecutive uh, consecutive wins is 10. Consecutive losses. Now this is the interesting thing is 8. So we would have to think 2 to the power of 8. And that's how deep the Martingale would go. So I can, you know, does anybody's account, uh, or I'm sorry, not does anybody, does my account, uh, you know, survive uh, a lot size of two to the eight? You know, that's very, very interesting. So and consecutive uh, losses here is two. Yeah, so the margin level, um, Z-score 0.45. I mean, very, very cool stuff. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Uh, like, share, and subscribe. Once again, just not financial advice. Just me having some fun with some code. And uh, hopefully you guys enjoy it. Like, share, and subscribe.